It's a somber anniversary for a Laurel County family, one that they say they should not have to commemorate. It's another bumpy evening for parts of the bluegrass state. Now we look toward the tropics and what is left over from Bill. I'm tracking a heavy rain threat coming up. This woman's advice to her elderly mother could end up saving you a fortune. What you need to know coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. It is an anniversary one Southern Kentucky family says they wish they didn't have to commemorate. Yesterday marked one year since Jerry Thompson died in a crash in Laurel County. Investigators say he was driving when another car hit his head on. The driver, Justin Wibbles, is charged with murder, reckless driving, and wanton endangerment. But despite the charges, he's out of jail. And as WKYT's Phil Pendleton tells us, Thompson's family wants justice. And our top story at 530. Anniversaries are days families like to spend celebrating, but for this family, June 16th, 2014, is no such day. Ever since he's been gone a year yesterday, it's just, we're living in a nightmare still yet. There's no justice been done. They mark the one year since the husband and father died by putting up this large wooden cross. You can still see debris from that awful day. Everything. I Lost my world. While his children say they will never get over their broken hearts. Anything I need it done, I couldn't do, Dad. Could I always do it. Justin D. Wibbles was indicted three months after the crash. He was charged with murder, reckless driving, and wanton endangerment. Police say he was speeding and drove in the emergency lane to pass a car where his truck and Thompson's windstream van collided head on. A lady stopped in front of my dad, so he swerved into his emergency lane to miss. Hitting a lady. Wibbles was arrested but released on bond. Court records show that he's since been charged with assault from an incident with the victim's relatives at a court hearing. We're very angry, you know. We're we're still hurt by the fact that he's not here with us no more. And but now I'm in a position where I'm very angry. Wibbles is due back in court on June 22nd in Laurel County. Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Relatives say they've been told Wibbles will face a trial sometime this fall, but a date has not been set. More rounds of showers and storms are moving across the bluegrass, and some of them could bring lightning and heavy rain. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's tracking the chance for severe weather on the first alert defender. Chris? Yeah, guys, small chance for out and out severe weather. As Jennifer was mentioning, these are a lot of uh, heavy rain and lightning producers, similar to what we've had over the past couple of days, that will fire up as the evening goes on. Live first alert defender. We've had rounds of showers and storms into southern and eastern Kentucky. A little break in the action there, but here we go. Uh, additional rounds of some storms now beginning to fire up. Into central Kentucky, it's a hodgepodge of action. The atmosphere is bubbling up now, so we're trying to get some of those storms to crank up across the Lexington Metro, not having a whole lot of success just yet down the Mountain Parkway corridor. Stanton through Campton Sagersville, a couple of showers and storms. Trying again for the Metro, but to our west, look at the complex of thunderstorms bearing down on Louisville. That is loaded for bear with heavy rain and lightning going to come rolling eastbound along Interstate 64 and other thunder. Thunderstorms to the south of that, just to the south of Bardstown and E-Town now beginning to fire up. Whatever is out there is going to wind up into central Kentucky over the next couple of hours. That flow will bring those storms on into town. So a storm or two around this evening. You got the tropical humidity. I can't really call it a truly hot day. Most areas are only mid and upper 80s now, but the heat index is up there into the low and mid 90s. That's what it feels like, courtesy of all the tropical uh, air that is in place and some of that is coming from what is going on around Dallas. That's the leftovers of Bill, guys. That'll bring a heavy rain threat to the region. We'll track it for you when I come back in a few minutes. Crews in Scott County are cleaning up after yesterday's storms. Emergency management leaders are hoping to get some new equipment that would help them track storms ahead of time. The Scott County Fiscal Court is discussing the possibility of purchasing a $20,000 Mesonet weather station. Hillary Thornton is in Georgetown talking to officials about that system. The Mesonet weather station is something that emergency management officials here in Scott County say they have been wanting for several years now. And they say all of the weather events already this year show how it would greatly benefit the county. From snowstorms to flooding to recent wind damage, Scott County has dealt with a wide range of weather events so far this year. Emergency management officials say many surrounding counties are already a part of the statewide Mesonet network. 
something they say is a big asset during these events. Scott County is a big hole right now, and if we can put one in there, that would be very helpful. Giving them current, not predicted, detailed weather data. It's us to see the, the weather as it's actually coming to us. Uh, we can look at Mesonet stations in Franklin County or Owen County, uh, maybe even as far as Shelby or Jefferson County, and be able to uh, gauge what the effect is going to be on Scott County. And they say preparation is not the only benefit, as it will help all the way through the recovery process. So it definitely helps us to prepare for and then uh, recover from. Uh, having good data that we can provide to people that need uh, insurance claims or uh, disaster declarations. Uh, it's going to be helpful from the beginning all the way to the end of an incident. If the county does purchase a station, officials say the next step would be deciding where to put it, as it does require being placed in a wide open area. In Scott County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The Kentucky Mesonet program runs through Western Kentucky University's Kentucky Climate Center. An ongoing investigation led to hundreds of arrests in the Midwest, with some here in Kentucky. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officers arrested 280 convicted criminals as part of an effort to remove criminals in the U.S. illegally. Officers arrested 272 men and eight women in Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Kansas, and Missouri. They're convicted of crimes including robbery, drunk driving, and drug trafficking. 16 people were arrested in Louisville, one in Georgetown, and one in Lexington. The search for a woman missing at Cumberland Falls State Park has come to a tragic end. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in McCreary County. Search crews found the body of 24-year-old Nina Parker this morning. She was in the water about 300 yards from the entrance of the park. We're told that Parker was with two other people near Eagle Falls in McCreary County when she disappeared Saturday night. You know, it, it hurts to uh, lose a loved one, and then there's there's uh, always that factor of the unknown, but with this, by, with this way right here, at least you can't have closure. The search crews from several counties assisted in the search and rescue. In Fleming County, a Kentucky state trooper is recovering tonight after a crash. The Flemingsburg Gazette reports the crash happened near the Robertson Fleming County line. The paper says Trooper Wagner was not hurt in the wreck, and crews were able to quickly clear that scene. News out of Frankfurt is creating a big splash. A new pool is scheduled to open in two weeks, but leaders at the park are waiting on a water slide to arrive. And as Jordan Velines tells us, if it doesn't make it on time, that could delay the opening. It's a story that's new at 5:30. It's been a long time coming. I think it's going to be kind of like to be. For somebody, the first time they saw the Grand Canyon, there's going to be a lot of awes. It may not be a mile deep like the Grand Canyon. The deepest part here is 12 feet. But aquatics director Larry Montgomery is excited about this project. He says this new facility costs about $5 million in bonding money. Over time, the old pool, built on this same spot in 1957, developed some major plumbing problems. Basically, we were a, a run, jump in the pool and swim, or jump off the diving board was what we had in the past. The new pool comes with a lazy river, an infinity pool, and a climbing wall. And when you reach the top, you can fall right in. And now we can accommodate much more, which is families are seeking. Montgomery expects 800 people in here daily, but there is one issue from keeping his opening day afloat. One hurdle we have right now uh, is the last big one is, is the uh, delivery of the slides coming. It has to be inspected part of the final uh, state inspection. If not, the July 1st grand opening may be pushed back. It's pretty critical that we get that. It took about 10 years to get to this point, and you can see there is more work to do, but Montgomery is just glad people don't have to go out of town to have summertime fun. They have it right here uh, in their own community. In Frankfurt, Jordan Valines, WKYT. The new aquatic center will bring about 60 new jobs to the bluegrass. Just say no, even when someone is telling you that you've won millions of dollars. That is the takeaway from this next story. It can be hard to do, but it could save your family a fortune. Mother, you need to, you're not going to win, you know, 
the chances of you winning this is one in a bazillion. And that was Diane Hayner's advice to her mother, Madeline, who refused to stop opening and reading lottery sweepstakes offers arriving in the mail. Every one of them asking for an upfront processing fee. My mother would say, I'm winning. I'd say, Mother, when you send these fees in, this is a scam. A real contest, you go buy a lottery ticket. And at some point, she started getting phone calls. The calls were nonstop all day, so Diane and her siblings had their parents' number changed to put an end to the calls and scams, but that didn't happen. The mailings start out as one or two, and then within two months' time, the mailbox was stuffed. I said, no more for this. I said, you're getting on my nerves, and you're making me go crazy with this stuff. I said, stop it. Despite her husband's pleas, Alfred's wife of 64 years continued to send money to the sweepstakes scam artists. I was really distraught with the fact that no matter what we said, my brother, my sister, or myself, even my dad, she, we weren't telling her the truth. She was going to win. So, with the consent of her father, Diane asked postal employees to suspend delivery of sweepstakes mail to the address. The Postal Service complied. Within two days. The mailings have stopped. Now it's only good for two years, but it's two years of peace of mind. Diane says her mother lost about $3,000 that she can track, but she knows it would have been a lot more if the post office didn't step in. Odds are um, the victim probably would have continued contributing to these sweepstakes scams. It's a crime. It's taking the older people for a ride and Many of them lose everything. I was just fortunate that I saw something and was able to help my dad stop it as soon as we could. Diane has some advice for the children of elderly parents living alone. If you notice that their mailbox is stuffed and they're talking about these contests all the time, you need to put your antenna up and you need to start asking questions. And in this case, Brian Willingham was convicted of bank fraud and sentenced to five years in prison. A new survey finds Lexington Mayor Jim Gray's approval rating going up. And Senator Rand Paul will make a trip home to the Commonwealth this weekend for a book signing. Bill Bryant has the bottom line. Good evening. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is enjoying some high approval ratings right now, and most people seem to believe the city is generally on the right track. A survey conducted for the Lexington Bluegrass Association of Realtors pegs Gray's approval at 74 percent. Less than 13 percent of those questioned by a contracted polling firm disapprove of the mayor's recent performance. The numbers may be bolstered by the fact that seven out of ten people who were polled think that Lexington is headed in the right direction. 400 people were surveyed and the poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 4.9 percent. Next year's presidential debates could have a different look. A bipartisan debate commission is trying to decide how to stop declining viewership, especially among young voters and Hispanics. The format is the main focus. As you may recall, Eastern Kentucky University is one of the venues being considered for a presidential or vice presidential debate next year. As as he continues his trips across the country while running for president, Senator Rand Paul is coming home to Kentucky for a joint book signing with his wife Kelly this weekend. The Pauls will appear in Bowling Green for that signing on Saturday. A Pike County Circuit judge has been temporarily suspended for name calling and his choice of words in the courtroom. The Herald Leader reports this afternoon that Judge Stephen D. Combs is suspended with pay while the Judicial Conduct Commission looks into the matter. Bill Bryant, WKYT.